Hello, how are you? This is Ali Karamoseni. Hi, hi, Ali. Can how you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you very much for coming today. My I just, yeah, my uh, yeah, no, we're very excited. Um, Samantha, can you also enable video sharing? Um, I think it says host has disabled it. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you see my, my slide? I, I can see your slides, yes. Um, and hopefully, um, yes. Now you can see me as well. Super. Yeah, but I cannot. Uh, I cannot do you know, the. I, I think can... uh, try again. Um, I think if you try again, hopefully it will work. Actually, I cannot start my video. Okay. Um, um, and you just pressed on it right now because I couldn't start it a few minutes ago. But I think oh. Samantha just changed something. But anyway, you can hear my voice. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you very much. This is uh, very exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm also very much excited, yeah. <clears throat> and Mehmet, my colleague, is the, is the host for the seminar. So he will take care of the, um, the um, introduction and the um, Q&A, but, uh, but I'll be around as well. And typically people join um, you know, three, four minutes after. So we typically start around five after um, the beginning of the hour. Okay. Um, but, you know, so I hope that's okay. So you, if you want to um, get a quick, um, you know, drink or something, you, you can definitely do that. Okay. Thank sure. you.
So this Terasaki Institute is a quite brand new new institute. Yes, yes, very new. I I I literally um, there was a um, as you know, Dr. Terasaki is a big pioneer in the area of transplantation, and he put a, um, he put a part of his wealth into a foundation into uh, this nonprofit. Uh, mm -hmm. which is the basis of the institute. So it, it was, um, the foundation has been around for a while, but I met the family a couple of years back and we've been discussing about how to um, convert this foundation into a research institute that, um, that will do innovation. <clears throat> so that means the uh, Terasek Institute, is that the, uh, independent from university? That's right, that's right. So we have obviously collaborations and, um, affiliation agreements and things like that, but um, uh, it's fully independent when it comes to its um, finances and intellectual property and all of that stuff. Okay, good. Mm. Yeah, it makes, makes things a little easier. <laughs> so you, are, you, you have more freedom. That's right, that's right. No, which is uh, fantastic. I feel like a um, really great opportunity to, um, to do um, good impact. So that means, can, can you still you know, the, uh, recruit students? Yeah, we, we can. Obviously, um, mostly with um, um, university affiliation and a, potentially a, um, a faculty from the university who can kind of be a co-supervisor. But, wow. um, but mostly we have also a lot of uh, postdocs. So that's okay. where the majority of the uh, people are right now. Mm -hmm. Well, how many how many researchers in the whole? So the institute is growing pretty quickly. Uh, right now, we're probably around sixty to seventy people, but we want to um, grow to probably two hundred people in the next um, couple of years. Okay, yeah, that's a good good size. Yeah, yeah, no, it should be very exciting. So we're working towards that. Yeah, good. <laughs> hmm. And Mehmet. Yes. Um, okay, so you are there. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Hello, Mahi. Hello, Mahi. I'm sorry, what did you say? Oh, yeah, I just say hello to your colleague. Oh, yes. Oh, hello, hello. Hi. Yeah. Due to some reason, I cannot start my video, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think the, it says the, your uh, host this has stopped it. Okay, good. Uh, so I can't share it either. Maybe. Oh. You can try again to share your camera. Okay, really? Okay. Oh, there we go. It worked. Great. <laughs> so you are, what time is it in Japan now? It's uh, 7 in the morning. <laughs> so I wake up early today. <laughs> uh, actually, today is a national holiday. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> well, you can you can definitely get a lot of uh, other things done today when waking up early. <laughs> so I'm going to slowly go in the background, Mehmet. Um, maybe in a, another minute we can kind of get started. Okay. Super. Uh, again, uh, Dr. Kadoka, thank you very, very much. I'm um, very, very thankful. And um, uh, as you know, um, our co colleague Julia uh, sends her regards as well. Oh, my pleasure. And, uh, it's my great honor. Thank to you. Thank you. Katoka, this brand new institute. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, or depending on where you are in part of the world, good morning. Today, we have Professor Kazunori Kataoka. He is the Director of General uh, Innovation Center of Nanomedicine at Kawasaki Institute of Industrial Promotion. He is also a professor at the Institute for Future Initiatives at the University of Tokyo. He has won numerous awards for his research, including Clemson Award from the Society of Biomaterials, Founders Award from the Control Release Society, 
Humboldt Research Award from Alexander von Humboldt Foundation, Leo Esaki Prize, Princess Takamatsu Cancer Research Fund Prize, you know, among others. He's been elected a foreign member of the U.S. National Academy of Engineering and a, is a fellow of the U.S. National Academy of Inventors. He has published more than 500 papers, HNDX 154. He's been on the board of over 15 international journals, including Polymer Edition, Journal of Biomaterial Science. He's an associate editor of ACS Nano. His major research interests include supramolecular materials for nanobiotechnology, focusing on drug and gene delivery system. Floor is yours, Professor uh, Katooka. Okay, thank you very much, Mehmet, for a kind introduction. I hope you can you can hear me. Yes. Okay, good. So first of all, I would express my sincere thanks to uh, uh, Julia, uh, Ari, and others for giving me this wonderful opportunity to give a talk at brand new Terasaki Institute for Biomedical Innovation. Uh, as you may know, the, Dr. Terasaki he is a second generation uh, Japanese American. So as a Japanese, you know, it's, I'm very much you know, the owner and uh, uh, pleased to have this opportunity. So today, I would like to focus in my talk, uh, self-assembled supramolecular nanosystems for targeted therapy of interactive diseases. So before I move into the contents, I would like to briefly introduce my, uh, this is also the new, brand new institute uh, named Innovation Center of Nanomedicine, uh, in short, ICON, uh, located in Kawasaki City. So uh, this is also, uh, so maybe uh, you are familiar with Tokyo, but uh, you are not so familiar with Kawasaki City. I, mean, I know that you are very familiar with a uh, with bike, Kawasaki, you know, but uh, this is a city, uh, not a motorbike. So uh, here is the, uh, you know, the uh, view of the, uh, metropolitan area of Tokyo. You can see Mount Fuji here. And this is a Tokyo metropolitan area. And this is a Tokyo International Airport. So unfortunately, because of this COVID-19 situation, <laughs> uh, you are not so uh, easy to fly into uh, this airport. But uh, in a uh, you know, usual situation, uh, this is a very, very busy airport. And actually, this is a Tamariba. And Kasak City is here, uh, just across uh, 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 Tokyo metropolitan area. And this is a, uh, uh, you know, area, region named uh, King Skyport. And this is an area where we, we locate, we are locating. So uh, King Skyport is uh, designated by the national government as an international strategic zone to facilitate research and development for uh, innovative healthcare business and industry in global aspects. So now, uh, uh, Almost 70 organizations, uh, <clears throat> you know, already settled in this King Skyfront area region. And you can see some of the uh, name of the, you know, very uh, global company like Johnson Johnson, Medotronic, and maybe, maybe you know the Fuji Film. And also some uh, university like uh, Keio University and Tokyo Institute of Technology, they opened the satellite campus here. And the uh, biggest <coughs> institute in this region area is National Institute of Health Science, that is the Japanese NIH. <clears throat> and uh, our institute, uh, ICON, just locates, uh, you know, uh, opposite side of, of the road, or the uh, street of uh, National Institute of Health Sciences. <clears throat> so uh, it's facing to Tama River and uh, from my uh, office, I every day uh, enjoy watching the, uh, you know, the air, airplanes, you know, the landing, uh, you know, the takeoff and landing. However, this is a river. So, of course, uh, even the airport is very near, <clears throat> you cannot do you know, the uh, crossing the river so easily. Fortunately, the, now the bridge is under construction. And this is the, you know, the uh, bridge, and here is our institute. So uh, this uh, bridge will be uh, completed by the end of this year. So after that, <clears throat> from the uh, international terminal of Haneda Airport, you can come to my our institute 
uh, within five minutes by car, or maybe 20, 25 minutes on foot. So that is a very, very, you know, the convenient, convenient location. <clears throat> so what we are doing at this uh, innovation center of nanomedicine. So our research goal is in body hospitals. So what is in body hospitals? Now, nowadays, you know, the medical doctors, medical instruments, medicine hospitals, they are all, you know, in a uh, separate. And, but we would like to all of these functions, you know, uh, integrate into tiny virus size nanomachine. And this uh, tiny nanomachine, you know, stably circulate in your body to, you know, carrying out diagnosis, sensing therapy uh, autonomously. Uh, so that means you do not need to go to hospital. So that is a concept of in-body hospitals. So this kind of, uh, when I talk this kind of, you know, the concept, uh, maybe some of you are, you know, uh, remind Fantastic Voyage. That is a, a, a very old scientific fiction movie from Hollywood. It's almost more than 50 years ago. But, but uh, uh, some of you know, uh, maybe heard about this, and or even you, you may have a chance to watch this uh, video, Fantastic Voyage. So the story is boring. So this is the inside of the, uh, you know, the vasculature of the patient. So, and this are the medical doctors and this are the liquid. So that means uh, you just shrunk the size of, you know, the uh, vehicle and medical doctor in a very, very small size and sending them directly into the vasculature and carrying out the, you know, the uh, treatment from inside of the body. So this is really the in-body hospitals. So what we are, want to do is to make this kind of, you know, the situation matter into reality in a uh, collaboration with academia and private company partnership. <clears throat> so uh, we have a, a, a grant from a Ministry of Education, Science and Technology of Japan named Center of Innovation Programs, COINS. And these are the members of our uh, initiative. And you can see many names of the university, but also uh, many companies uh, joining uh, this uh, initiative. And already, as shown in the you know, colored orange color, this, you know, the company and the university have some activity or open satellite laboratory in our institute. And of course, the project goal is development of in-body hospitals by 2045, 2045. So still 20, 25 years ago, anyway. And, but to accelerate the social implementation of this kind of concept, uh, <clears throat> we, are in, we encourage to establish startup companies based on academia industry cooperation and already uh, this whole uh, startup, you know, uh, uh, from this uh, project. And actually, uh, this kind of project has already been, you know, the acquired the interest from uh, not only in, in inside of Japan, but from outside. Uh, and this is uh, uh, highlighted as focal point in Nature Magazine, a nano hospital in everybody. That means nanoscale doctors curing the body from within. So the, this, of course, the nano machine is uh, still on the way. I mean, the, this is a goal. So uh, I think that this kind of, you know, the project is just like a, uh, similar to the evolution of automobile. So automobile start from, you know, just, just running and cross over the barrier and coming connected car and self-driving. So evolution of nano machine is just like this. First, making nano systems by supramolecular assembly and enabling nano system to crossing the barriers in the body, for example, BBB and controlling the functions of nanosystems by external and internal signals, pH light and ultrasound. And then finally, in 2045, autonomously controlled nanomachines circulating 24 hours in the body to maintain our health. That is a goal of in-body hospitals. 
So, uh, of course, this is a you know, scientific seminar. So I'd like to focus in the, in the real world here. Uh, uh, you know, uh, what we now, what we can do and what we are uh, going to do by uh, supramolecular self-assembled nanosystems. So how to make nanosystems? So our approach is based on uh, uh, polymer science. So first, uh, we molecular engineering to integrate desired functionality into primary structure of synthetic macromolecules. And this is a, you know, a macromolecule composed of hydrophilic and hydrophobic segment, which we call, this is just like, a, you know, connecting the blocks. So this kind of polymer is called block copolymer. So we integrate the sensing ability to selectively bind target, operation ability to execute diagnostics and therapy, and processing ability to change structure responding to stimuli. And of course, whole uh, you know, structure should be biocompatible uh, and maybe better to be biodegradable. So uh, for the hydrophilic segment, uh, we mainly use uh, polyethylene glycol, and for uh, hydrophobic segment, uh, we, we are focusing on polyamine acids. So and then uh, you just you know the uh, you know disperse this uh, engineered block copolymer in the presence of drug or nucleic acid, protein, whatever you want to deliver. It's spontaneously self-assembled into supramolecular nanosystems named polymeric mycins in this case. And size is uh, around 50 nanometers. And this is a TEM image. And uh, actually, uh, it's quite uh, size is almost comparable to the hepatitis C virus. And importantly, uh, you know, the core, which, you know, the loaded with many functional molecules are uh, totally covered by this pale green shell. Uh, this is a hydrophobic shell, and this exerts a stillness under blood circulation. So, so even you can, you know, directly observe how this stills, you know, barrier can work inside of our body by intravital microscopy. So this, uh, the, you know, we are now observing the thin capillary of ear lobe of mouse. And uh, we, uh, you know, the labeled platelets, which is sizes one to four microns in green fluorescence uh, dye, and nanosystems, which is, you know, of course, below 100 nanometers by red fluorescence dye. And when, we inject the nanosystem without PG. What we observe is like this. So the nanosystem, you know, become size comparable to platelets. That means it's instantaneously aggregate. And sometimes it's, you know, co-localized co with platelets. That means it stick to the platelets. And of course, this is a, you know, dangerous situation. And it may result in the, in the uh, embolization. So, we don't like this kind of situation. But when we cover the surface with totally with PG, the situation is totally changed like this. So there's no, no more aggregates. And nanosystems smoothly circulate in, in a, you know, the blood compartment. And eventually, this is one example, plasma clearance and, and of the uh, you know, polymeric mice loaded with platinum based anti-cancer agent. So uh, free drug, the obesoprachin, you know, uh, quickly excrete from the body, but uh, in the micellar form, it stay in a very, uh, you know, longevity in blood circulation. And more importantly, we observe the significant accumulation to solid tumor like this. So why it accumulates? Maybe you are very familiar with uh, uh, EPRP, that is enhanced permeability and retention effect, First, you know, the proposed by uh, Dr. Matsumura and Dr. Maeda in Japan. So the, you know, the mechanism is quite easy, or well, maybe very simple. Actually, the, uh, in a uh, vasculature, uh, capillary in solid tumor has a very leaky structure with many openings. So the long circulation, long circulating carrier like polymer, polymer mycelus easily, you know, accumulate selectively in solid tumor without, uh, you know, without reducing the non-specific accumulation to healthy tissues, uh, which is a big problem of uh, small drugs. You know, small drugs 
no specific reactive rate all over the body to, to exert some, uh, you know, the uh, side effects. However, the reality is a little bit more complicated because uh, many, many of the nanomedicines, including ourselves, uh, now in a clinical, you know, the trial, clinical situation, and we encountered some difficulties. That means uh, not only the extravasation, we definitely need the effective penetration into tumor mass, but sometimes there's a heterogeneity in EPR effect from patient to patient or in the stage of the cancer, et cetera. And stroma. In the uh, clinical <coughs> situation, uh, most of the uh, you know tumor has sick stroma, and this stroma is become a very big penetration barrier. So here's a you know the uh, image of the human pancreatic cancer, very uh, intractable cancer with sick stroma. So this you know the region here with dark blue region that is a cancer cell nest, but this cancer cell nest is totally you know surrounded by sick stroma in red color. And vessel you know, locates only in the stroma. So that means that uh, even your you know, carrier system or your nano system can extravasate. Still, they need to you know, uh, deeply penetrate through this stroma to reach the uh, target, cancer cells. <clears throat> so how to circumvent these uh, difficulties? There may be three approaches. Number one is the size and duration of nanosystems. <clears throat> And second is the use of regions enhancing tumor permeability. And third, uh, this is a, you know, a name called vas vascular normalization. And the use of ligands, inducing active transport. So I would like to show uh, how this size modulation works to overcome this kind of penetration barrier. <clears throat> so again, we utilize the <coughs> intravital microscopy to directly observe the, uh, this kind of phenomena. So uh, first we observe the, you know, the sub-Q you know, uh, model of the tumor by this intravital microscopy, and then inject the fluorescent labeled polymeric micelle uh, from tail vein. And observe for continuously for a long time period. And this is a you know, example. And we are observing this inside of the uh, pancreatic cancer. So you see, please follow the red arrows. Now you see some kind of the burst, or which we call nano eruption. So there's a, you know, the uh, very random, the burst takes place in, you know, every, any, you know, the many places of uh, pancreatic cancer. Of course, this is, you know, the uh, high-speed movement. So each event is actually, it's quite slow. So slow opening and slow closing. And this is a magnified image, and you can see more clearly uh, the, the, how it, uh, it looks like. So in the left side is 30 nanometer micelle, right side image is uh, 70 nanometer micelles. And both undergoes this you know, the extravasate by this nano eruption. But if you observe carefully, the, uh, you know, the behavior is a little bit different. For 70 nanometer micelles, it looks like to stuck in the vicinity of the nano eruption site. But for the 30 nanometer micelles, it's, you know, gradually, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, diffuse out from the site of the nano eruption. And this is, you know, the, oh, sorry, the, a quantitative image and right side 70 nanometer, and at the site of the eruption, there's an increase in the fluorescence intensity and stay. And there's a no increase in the fluorescence intensity in non eruption site. But left side here, 30 nanometer particles, of course, there's an increase in the fluorescence intensity at the eruption site, but then it's slowly decreases. That means it's diffused out. And even in a, a non eruption site, still we observe the increase in the fluorescence intensity. So that means the, uh, you know, the small size uh, mice like 30 nanometer can easily penetrate into tumor. But uh, if you increase the size to 70 nanometer, it's just stuck in the vicinity of the vasculatures. 
So actually, this is a dox dox loaded stair slip. So it's a size around 100 millimeters. It's just stay in the uh, vicinity of the vasculature and cannot enter into the uh, cancer cells. And actually, we observe the significant difference in anti-cancer efficacy of the polymeric mice loaded with uh, anti-cancer drugs, uh, you, know, de you know, depend on the size. And it, it, when we downregulate the size 30 nanometer, we, we observe a very significant you know, efficacy against uh, 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 pancreatic tumor. And actually, this 30 nanometer mice, it has already been in a, a clinical trial. So this is, uh, you know, the uh, ongoing clinical trials of mice and nanomedicines are loaded with anti-cancer agents, cytotoxic regions, paprituxyl, cisplatin, epilubicin, and dafaplatin. Uh, all of them are uh, uh, conducted clinical uh, trials by, uh, uh, by our company, Nanocarrier. And uh, one of them, the cisplatin, which is uh, now a uh, combination with uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor, ketoneer. So uh, from now on, I, I would like to focus in the more uh, recent uh, research results from our group. And oh, I, I know that uh, many of you in, at Terrasat Institute are interested in the treatment of brain diseases. So uh, we focus, you know, I focus here on the uh, uh, treat glioblastoma multiform. This is one of the very, uh, you know, the uh, well-known unmet medical need. The uh, GBM is the most deadly form of human cancer. Median survival is just only 10 to 40 months. And the best current standard of care extends over our survival to just 14 to 16 months. So that is a very miserable situation. So uh, we'd like to uh, you know, treat this kind of GBM by nanomedicine approach. So uh, from the drug delivery standpoint, of, uh, one of the problem of GBM is shown here. So uh, GBM has a you know, very tight uh, barrier, vascular barrier called the BBTB. So the, it's quite difficult to, to, you know, to uh, uh, expect the significant uh, EPRP for this type of cancer. So how to approach to treat GBM? There's a three approach maybe. The combination with immune checkpoint inhibitors, use of ligands inducing active transport and size modulation. So first I'd like to talk about the combination with immune uh, checkpoint inhibitors. And as you may know, GBM, you know, is a cold, cold tumor. So, uh, so immuno checkpoint inhibitor doesn't work. So we need some, you know, the strategy to mature the dendritic cells. And one of the approach is chemoimmunotherapy. So, uh, because some of the, uh, you know, anti-cancer agents like epilobicin and doxorubicin induce the uh, so-called immunogenic cell death. And uh, if the cancer cell going to ICD, it secretes the dump, the CRT, HMG, B1, and ATP, and these compounds, you know, uh, mature the uh, DC to recruit more and more cytotoxic T lymphocytes, CTL. So the fortunately, uh, we already is, you know, the develop the mice loaded with doxorubicin or epilobicin. And this is a structure. And we conjugate uh, epilobicin by hydrosome linkage, which is pH sensitive. So this is a, a mice is stable under blood circulation, but it liberate the active drug uh, in, a, in the acidic compartment or uh, tumor. And of course, the, uh, you cannot expect a high accumulation of polymeric mice in glio, uh, glioblastoma because of poor EPRP, but still, the, uh, compared to the, you know, the, uh, you know, epilepsy itself, we can expect uh, some increase, 10 times increase in the accumulation. And actually, when we combine this epilepsy mice with anti-PD1, uh, this is a survival uh, and uh, compared to ICI only and the producing mice only, we got the very, uh, you know, the uh, uh, outstanding performance of 100% survival over uh, seven months. And this is MRI. And after seven months, uh, almost all, all, you know, glioblastoma uh, disappeared. However, this is a PTIN positive 
uh, Guido Bonastoma. What is P10? So P10 maturation is cancer, acquire resistance to ICI. P10 is a hospital's and tensing hormone derived from chromosome. And when uh, P10 is downregulated, it's, you know, uh, upregulate, uh, you know, increase the myeloid derived suppressor cells to, you know, uh, to make whole tumor immunotherapy resistance. Actually, there's a, you know, the, when there's an increase in the uh, uh, mutation, there's a significant increase in the, uh, you know, the P10 mutations. And a melanoma patients after anti PD1 administration accumulated P10 mutation. So it's quite, you know, clinically, uh, you know, the treating of the P10 uh, negative, the uh, uh, cancer is quite important. So this is the results. So uh, as you can see, uh, the epilepsy micelle uh, in combination with anti-PD-1 shows a significant efficacy, even for this P10 negative CT2A uh, orthotopic glioblastoma model compared to epilepsy micelle or anti-PD-1. So that means that this is a, a new, maybe the uh, strategy to treat uh, glioblastoma in combination with uh, nanomedicine in combination with immuno checkpoint inhibitors. Okay, so how about the use of lineups? Uh, you know, the BBTV is a big problem, but still there's opportunity to, you know, to crossing BBTV by active transport utilizing lineups. And one of such lineups is that uh, uh, peptide. So in this case, uh, we focus on the cyclical GDD because uh, this cyclic RGD has a specific binding to alpha with beta 3 integrin over expressed on tumor vasculature. And again, the intervital uh, microscopy clearly, you know, show the, uh, you know, how it works. So in this uh, example, we labeled the CRGD installed mice with red fluorescence dye and non-targeted mice with green fluorescence dye and, uh, and co-injection. Co so after injecting into five minutes, and we are now observing inside of the glioblastoma. Of course, inside of vasculature is a mixed color of green and uh, red, that is a yellow. However, five hours later, you can see inside of the glioblastoma turns into a red color. So that means that the CRG inside of mice has quickly accumulated into glioblastoma. And actually, this is a, a treatment of the uh, 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 glioblastoma U87MG. So th this is, uh, you know, the, we are utilizing uh, noodle mouse in this case. So the, uh, for the sub-Q model, both works quite well, but for the also top model, only the mice with CRZ works. So that means, especially in the also topic, uh, you know, model or maybe human clinical case, the, you know, installation of this kind of the, you know, lidance uh, facilitates, you know, extravasation may be very useful. And not only the extravasation, uh, this kind of ligand even facilitate the penetration of nanomedicine into you know, mass of the tumor. So we are now observing the uh, you know, penetration of mice into a glioma spheroid. So you can see after 24 hours, there's a significant increase in the fluorescence uh, intensity in the center of the uh, glioma superoids. You can see here, this is a distance from the edge to center, and this is a normalized fluorescence intensity. And compared to the, you know, the uh, uh, control epilepsy micelle, there's a significant increase in the fluorescence intensity, uh, not only in the edge, but also in the center of a CRGD loaded, uh, uh, conjugated epilepsy micelles. Okay, how about the size modulation? Still, you know, the, of course, it's quite difficult for the particles to connect to, to you know, snake into the uh, glioblastoma tissue, but compared to the, you know, the intact BVD, still there's an opportunity to, to passing uh, through this, you know, the thin, you know, the uh, pathway to move into glioblastoma. One of the opportunity is downsizing. You mean you can downsize in the nanomedicine, hopefully maybe size comparable to antibody, you can still have a, you know, opportunity to accumulate into glioblastoma. 
And we utilize this strategy for uh, you know, delivering the nucleic acid compounds, siRNA and antisense oligo to glioblastoma. Uh, actually, this is a history of drug development. That is quite interesting because for the small molecule drugs, the first man-made organic compound, the compound is urea, and the first man-made drug compound is aspirin. However, it takes more than almost 70 years. How about uh, antibody drugs? From the discovery of monoclonal antibody to first antibody drug into market, it took 23 years. And uh, uh, discovery of RNAi to siRNA on the market, it took 20 years. So anyway, the drug development takes time. So, and uh, another uh, problem of the siRNA and the ASO from the standpoint of the nanomedicine is that uh, in the stability and impaired distribution, this is a critical issue for antisense oligo and siRNA, as you may know. So, we would like to construct a smaller nanosystem for siRNA and ASO delivery. <clears throat> so, my series, as I mentioned, it's 40 nanometers, and the siRNA is 4 nanometers, it's too small and poor longevity in blood circulation. But uh, we are uh, this is a target region of the size. This is a, a size of antibody, around 20 nanometers. So uh, we prepare the small nano uh, systems, uh, size comparable to antibody. And another important point, if you really want to make your system into a clinical translation, the preparation process should be simple. Sometimes chemists wants to put many, many, many functions into your particle, and this is okay for writing paper, but never move, move, uh, move into a uh, clinical trial. It's too difficult to for the, you know, the, to a GMP production. So what we, you know, develop is, you know, which meets this criteria, size and simple process of formulation, that is the unit P PIC. So what is unit PIC? You need to pick. So uh, I'd like to uh, explain about a polyion complex myself, shown here. So the, for example, siRNA, that is a polyanion. So if you just mix siRNA with a, the opposite charge, the block of polymer, it spontaneously form a uh, polyion complex micelles by uh, ionic interaction. But we found out this process is not, you know, just a single step, you know, process. It's always, you know, the this, you know, process always have two steps. The first step is a formation of unit to PIC to, you know, to compensate the charge. That is a, you know, smallest uh, associates, the minimum, you know, the associates to compensate uh, positive and negative charge. And this, then this unit PIC undergoes a secondary association to form the polyion complex micelles. So we focus, you know, on this unit PIC because this size is a very good size. And, but we need to, you know, stop to, uh, you know, to grow into, uh, you know, the multi-molecular micelles. So uh, to make long story short, we design very simple unit PIC. We just matching the number of charges of siRNA and polycation because siRNA is a negative charge forty. So we pre we you know the precisely control the uh, charge or you know <coughs> number of positive charge to twenty, and we change the PEG from single round PEG to two round PEG, and this and just mixing these two. It spontaneously form unit to PIC. The size is exactly the same size to antibody, which is loaded with a uh, single uh, SIRNA in the core, but just by mixing. So you may be wondering, just this kind of, you know, the simple structure really stabilizes the SIRNA. I will show you the results by intravital microscopy. So in this experiment, we conjugate the uh, pair of the fluorescence type, the uh, donor and the acceptor, to induce a uh, threat, that is a fluorescence resonance energy transfer, because distance is 5 nanometer. So if you, you know, the excite 
the uh, donor process. This energy, you know, transfer to acceptor. And then you can observe the fluorescence of acceptor molecules. But if SRNA degree, then you, if you, you know, the excite the donor, you just observe donor fluorescence. So we are now observing the same capillary of the mass ear group. Now left side is a naked SRNA and right side is unique to PIC. You can immediately see the difference. For naked SRNA, it's, it's, you know, the instantaneously color changed to blue. That is a degradation of SRNA. But for the unique PIC, it stay magenta. So that means we keep to observe the fluorescence from acceptor type. And actually, this is a longevity, and we got a very significant improvement in the longevity of SIRNA under blood circulation. So uh, we utilize this system for the uh, for treatment, treatment of uh, uh, glioblastoma uh, from uh, you know the derived from patient, <clears throat> and targeting the not regulated linear non-coding RNA two G one. And we, you know, load antisense oligo into this unit PIC and, uh, and see the you know, efficacy by systemic uh, injection. First, we confirm really uh, this ASO uh, selectively accumulate into uh, brain tumor, glioblastoma, and we clearly observe the significant accumulation. Then what about the efficacy? So here is our results, and this is a tumor for you. So compared to the control, the significant decrease in the size of the uh, glioblastoma, and there's a significant knockdown of target to G1. Then we got a 100% survival over 100 days for uh, mice treated with a uh, unit PIC loaded with antisense to G1. So, uh, if you are a chemist, you may you may know the uh, very unique characteristics of polyiron complex. So it is quite difficult to separate the polycation and polyanion in the aqueous solution because this is a you know very strong ionic interaction. However, this polyiron complex molecule can easily you know the exchange the like this. So this is dynamic theory. Always, the, this PIC pairing is dynamic, like this, like this shown in this movie. So, our, you know, the question is whether really this kind of dynamic pairing really, of course, it, you know, undergoes a dynamic dynamic pairing in a in a you know in a vessel. I mean, you know, in a uh, in a uh, in vitro. However, our question is that really this kind of situation of course, inside of the our body. So to confirm this uh, dynamic pair, we, we again utilize red. And in this case, we, you know, uh, label the polymer with donor and SRNA with acceptor. And first, we, you know, the inject the polymer itself from tail vein of animals. And of course, we do not observe any bread. So inside of the capillary, we observe the blue fluorescence. And if there is a significant bread occurs, there is an increase into magenta. Now, we load free SIRNA, you know, conjugated with Alexa dye. And if really this polymer catch the bread, we should observe the high bread efficiency. Now, just after injection, the color totally changed to magenta color. So that means polymer catch the SRNA during the blood circulation. And for the proof of concept, we inject a non-labeled polymer. So that means that this non-labeled polymer, you know, the exchange with uh, labeled polymer, and there should be the uh, lowering of the bread efficiency. Maybe you may observe green color, and actually it's turned into green. So this result clearly shows the circulating polymers can directly catch 
injected naked RNA in the bloodstream to hold the linked PIC in site. So this is a siRNA rumble with Pegasus PLA in circulating blood. And actually, this is much difficult than a rendezvous in outer space, because outer space, there's nothing. So it's, you can easily, you know, find the, you know, the, you know, the counterpart. But you, you know, inside of our, you know, blood, there's a thing, you know, cause blood cells and many proteins. So situation is more like in the rendezvous in the moving ground. So this, you know, three, you know, guys with red cap recognize each other and changing the partners in the moving crowd. So this is a very bio-orthogonal phenomenon. So we summarize the delivery mechanism. That is just like a, a rugby football game. So like this, so unit PIC exert dynamic pairing with free polymers and receiving SRNA in bloodstream just like pass in the rugby football game, like this. So in this way, SRNA can be dynamically stabilized and make a goal try at the target site in the body. So this is a very totally new mechanism of drug delivery. Actually, this system works not only for the glioblastoma, but also for the uh, very strong rich pancreatic tumor. And you can see the significant accumulation selectively occurs in the tumor. And as I show, this is a, you know, a stroma rich pancreatic cancer. And you see the red fluorescence is SRNA. You can see significant accumulation of SRNA into the, uh, you know, the uh, cancer cell nest of BX species in tumor. And this is a distribution you can see compared to stroma, there's an increase in the distribution of SRNA in cancer cell nest. And uh, we do observe the uh, uh, significant knockdown for uh, this in case of PLK1. And uh, there's a apoptosis, a significant apoptosis occurs uh, uh, in the uh, uh, pancreatic cancer. And this is efficacy against uh, uh, another type of pancreatic cancer and triple negative breast cancer models. And uh, liver metastasis was totally, you know, the uh, uh, suppressed uh, by uh, this unit PIC injection. And this is a survival uh, rate. Well, this is a, a pulmonary metastasis model uh, injected with uh, uh, breast cancer, TNBC uh, model. And this is the uh, survival rate of liver metastasis model injected with uh, MIAPACA2. So according to these results, the, uh, recently, uh, Nanocarrier Corporation, uh, in, co in collaboration with National Cancer Institute of Japan, starting a phase one clinical trial of unit PIC loaded with SIPRDM14, that is a, a transcriptional regulator maintaining pluripotency in embryonic stem cells, uh, for the treatment of HER2 negative uh, breast cancer. And we are now preparing the next uh, clinical trial for the uh, treatment of uh, glioblastoma uh, by the unit uh, PIC loaded with uh, 2G1 uh, antisense oligo. So uh, uh, can, I, can I still, still continue uh, my uh, Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Is it okay? Okay. Ahead. So I would like to uh, spend uh, my rest of my time for how to crossing the intact BBB. This is intact BBB, not uh, glioblastoma. So the crossing intact BBB is more difficult because it's a really have a tight junction and even into PSC and antibody cannot cross. So only way is to uh, utilizing the ligand conjugated nerve system to passing through the, you know, the endothelial layer by active transport, like CRG. But of course we cannot use CRGD for this case. So instead of CRGD, we focus on the GLUT1, that is a glucose transporter. Because the reason is that the glucose transporter expression is significantly 
はい。In the,、uh, you know, the, in the endothelial layer of brain, compared to other, you know, proteins. And, uh, uh old work of, uh, group one, uh, you know, the teachers that the OH group of position one, three, four is essential for the, uh, group one to recognize glucose, but still, uh, this, uh, six position is available. So, uh, by this, uh, chemistry, we conjugate the glucose at the sixth position of group, uh, glucopolymer and make, uh, myself. Uh, you know, decorated with, uh, glucose, loaded with, uh, process that. <clears throat> and, and another hypothesis, because we, you know, there are already many, many study, uh, previous study, uh, to, to、uh, try to send, you know, nanomedicine by、uh, utilizing glucose transporter. However, the efficacy is not so high. So,、uh, we hypothesize. By increasing blood glucose level after fasting may facilitate the translocation of, you know, the GLUT1 from apical to basal side and thereby carrying glucose conjugated nanosystem binding to GLUT1 into brain parenchyma. So this is a new approach. So not just, you know, target the receptor, but target the receptor followed by modulating the, you know, receptor Uh, translocation by,、uh, by, you know, by,、uh, glucose concentration in blood. So actually, we fast animal for 20 hours and follow the glucose by cell IV injection. So without the,、uh, only, without, you know, only this case, we just observe the slight increase in the、uh, brain accumulation for the glucose conjugated my cell. With different density of glucose on the surface. However, if we followed by glucose IP injection, we observe the boost in the increase in the brain activation. Actually, this one here, the、uh, m y c e l l、uh, with、uh, 25% of PAG、uh, moiety、uh, conjugated with glucose shows a significant increase in the、uh, brain activation. It's reached about 6% dose per Gram brain. This is a very,、uh, you know, the、uh, special, you know, the special value because antibody drugs accumulation in brains usually less than 0.1%. And even utilizing, you know, the transparent receptors, always the accumulation is maybe less than 1%. So 6% is really high. And more importantly, this, you know, the、uh, fasting and glycemic control. Works only for the brain. So there's no increase for any other organs, including liver. So only for the brain,、uh, there's a significant increase in accumulation by this、uh, glycemic control approach. And the, another question is really it crossing the BV. So we again utilize intravital microscopy. And after, you know, injecting mice,、uh, mice cells, followed and then Glucose injection and 60 minutes later, we clearly observe the increase in the fluorescence intensity in brain parenchyma. And here is the fluorescence intensity after glucose injection 30 minutes later, there's an increase in the fluorescence. And actually, this increase is really very nicely synchronized in the change in the blood glucose level. So we utilize this system to deliver the many, you know, the active compounds in the brain. So one, one example here is delivering antibody into brain. So step one is crossing the BBD with keeping integrity of my cell structure and in the brain parenchyma, releasing antibody in brain parenchyma. This is really smart, you know, the nano systems. How to do this? We focus, that means that,、uh, uh, you know, endosome, there is a lower the pH condition and In the uh, uh, brain, there's a highly reductive environment in the increase in the glutathione concentration. So,、uh, we make micelle which is responding to dual signal, pH and glutathione. How to prepare this? So, first, we prepare the, this group polymer,、uh, glucose conjugated polyacetyl glycol and polycatalan segment. And here's a, a FAB fragment of one type. But unfortunately, the Charge density is low. 
So uh, you cannot uh, easily form stable PRC micellar structure just mixing this FAB fragment with block polymer. So we uh, you know, carried out a charge conversional strategy. So chemically modified the lysine sediment to make this antibody fragment very strongly anionic nature. However, of course, if you carry out this kind of chemical modification, it loses our antigen, antigen binding ability, but uh, we utilize this, you know, the moiety. So uh, this, uh, in, in this case, this, you know, easy creep in the, uh, you know, uh, acidic pH to reproduce, you know, amino groups to recover the antibody, you know, binding abilities, uh, antigen binding abilities. And uh, also we stabilize the mice with disulfide linkage, and this may, you know, creep in the brain parenchyma. So this is a sense, you know, uh, pass crossing the BBB and sensing reductive environment and releasing antibody. So here is a brain accumulation. We have observed a hundred times increase for the, uh, you know, uh, Alzheimer's disease mass model. And this is the amount of soluble A beta in brain. So this is a pre-treatment. And if there's no treatment, there's an increase in the uh, A beta amount. But after treatment with this uh, uh, micellar systems, we do observe a significant decrease in the amount of soluble uh, uh, amyloid beta. So that means uh, maybe we can utilize this system for sending antibody or uh, oligonucleotides for the uh, treatment of many, uh, uh, you know, uh, brain disorder diseases. So finally, this is a, a final slide maybe. So uh, in the future, maybe not only sending the drugs, but maybe we can prepare uh, in situ the drug production. Uh, of course, we can make a uh, gene uh, expressing function like utilizing gene or messenger RNA, or we can send catalysis into uh, uh, you know tumor. So in this typical example, uh, we loaded the enzyme in the uh, you know inside of the uh, our nanosystem, and this red spots are uh, uh, you know the our nanosystems accumulated into a tumor, and we inject the prodrug without any fluorescence, but if this nanoreactor works inside the tumor, we should observe <coughs> the green fluorescence. Now, we observe green fluorescence, that means it produces drug inside. And in future, we can integrate this nanosystem into living cell, work as an artificial organa, and of course, uh, <coughs> we can carry out a gene repair by CRISPR-Cas9 systems, for example. And uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we, we had a collaboration with uh, Nile Massey and Jennifer Dudner group in UC Berkeley, and we send our polymer to their group, and they, are, they you know, construct this kind of, you know, the nanosystems, and efficiently correct the DNA mutation that causes Duchenne muscular dystrophy in mice with minimum of target DNA damages. So in future, we can make this kind of nanosystems for uh, a, you know, the gene repair, and it may work at the really the uh, in-body hospitals. So finally, I'd like to express all uh, uh, thanks to all of my co-workers, and thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you for the, the great talk, uh, Professor Kataoka. The, the questions. Um, one question is Is it feasible to use polymeric micelles for brain targeted delivery of metals like gadolinium in order to decrease the radiotherapy dose? Uh, <clears throat> I'm not so familiar with that uh, kind of application, but of course, uh, if you can you know, uh, use uh, this kind of, for example, you know, the glucose conjugated system, for example, and, uh, and to increase accumulation to brain, of course, uh, you may have such kind of application, yeah. Is any of your products going into a clinic for human use? Uh, yes, uh, as I shown in the uh, slides, 
four, four formulations uh, loaded with cytotoxic regions uh, in clinical trial for the treatment of several different types of cancer, and now in the phase one to phase two clinical trial. And as for the uh, uh, antisense oligo, uh, no, no, the SIRNA, uh, we just start the uh, uh, phase one clinical trial for the treatment of uh, uh, heart negative uh, breast cancer model. So not to, still not in the market, but uh, uh, already in uh, uh, clinical translation. I see. Once the drug does its function, what happens to the, the byproducts? Do they get degraded from the body easily or? Oh, you mean the polymer, right? Yes, yes. Well, yeah, that is a very important question. Actually, the, that's the reason why <clears throat> we we utilize the polyamino acids as one of the segments because polyamino acid is a polypeptide. So it can easily degrade by enzyme. And uh, uh, in case of the polyacetyl glycol, uh, the, its molecular weight is important. The, uh, when, you know, after the disintegration of my cells, the molecular weight of broccopolymer is usually 10,000 to 20,000. And uh, uh, PEG molecular weight is 12K. So still it can excrete from kidney. However, in case of the unit PNC, we utilize a uh, 80K PG. So molecular weight is too high for I expect, uh, you know, just a, uh, you know, usual uh, glomerular filtration. However, we found out in this case, that this, you know, two armed PG, Pegasus PG has a oligo, you know, the cationic chain of polylysine or polyolomycin. And it, you know, uh, can smoothly excrete from vine root of the river. First, it tentatively, you know, the uh, tentatively bind to sinusoidal endocellular layer, and then smoothly, you know, transport into pile. And uh, we follow this whole process by intravital microscopy and maybe within six, six to 10 hours, all the polymers, you know, the excrete from viral root. And uh, actually uh, this uh, unit PSC system has uh, already, I mentioned, it's already in the clinical trial. And uh, uh, there's a dose escalation study. And uh, even at this you know, high dose, we do not observe any, uh, any you know, the serious problem toxicity in patients. I see. Well, thank you. That's all the questions I have. Thank you for the fantastic talk and your time, Professor. Yes, yeah, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And in the future, uh, uh, I'd like to all, all of you to welcome to our institute, just locates uh, next to Haneda Airport after COVID-19, after vaccination. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.